So, so basically, uh, this is part four for the press. Uh, my roommate, Melissa Pye, I baited her and her boyfriend. We were having a conversation. We were in the common area of the house. Her boyfriend was there, and I said, yeah, Kuomo was in Epstein's black, black book, and he's under investigation for pay-to-play, and I said, Byron Brown's implicated in this as well. And I had a feeling that someone had reached out to Melissa, and she was participating in the fraud. And I'm not going to go into what evidence I have of that, because I don't want them to know, I don't want United or Byron Brown or Cuomo or anyone to know what evidence I'm using uh, to, I don't let everybody, I don't let the left hand know what their right hand is screwing up, so they don't know how their right hand is, is letting me know what the left hand is doing. I'm a, I'm a detective. I, I know how to protect my sources to a point. And she said, uh, now, she said, oh, I know his brother. I got to meet the mayor. He's really nice. I said, well, he's implicated in these fraud scams, and he's under investigation with his friend Cuomo. She said, well, you just do what you got to do, but he's really nice. I got to meet him. She got to meet the mayor personally. Now, this isn't significant because when I first moved into that house, both of my roommates lauded me as a hero. Uh, they knew my story. They knew I was being refused cancer treatment. Uh, she said she knew she wasn't. Both of them told me they knew they weren't getting proper medical care. In fact, Hazel said that she had gone to a doctor visit, and the doctor tried to convince her that she had lupus, and she said, what evidence do you have of this diagnosis? My diagnosis is something completely different. I'm almost 50 years old. I've had the same diagnosis all my life. Now, all of a sudden, I'm age 49, and you're trying to tell me I have lupus. What evidence do you have? That I have this diagnosis. Oh, well, we saw something in your blood work. She says, well, let me see. Well, the doctor wouldn't produce it. And then the doctor tried to tell her that she wanted her to take this expensive medication for lupus. And she says, lady, I'm not going to take a medication based on a diagnosis when you're not giving me any evidence. I'm not going to, you're not saying that I have this symptom or you're not giving me any evidence that I have lupus. And then she said, apparently, the doctor got threatening, and she said, you threaten me again, Doc, I'm going wipe to the, wipe the floor with you. You don't threaten me. And she said she hadn't been back to the doctor since. And my landlord gave me a similar story, and my pastor gave me another similar story, except the pastor and the landlord said that they were being told they had high blood pressure when their blood pressure was in normal range. And they were being told, being prescribed blood pressure medication that made them sick because it dropped their blood pressure too low because they didn't really need it. And they've done that same thing with me. They kept telling me, you have high blood pressure, you have high blood pressure. No, I don't. I have sinus tachycardia, and that makes my high blood pressure go up. And that tachycardia is actually caused by the autism. The atenolol that I take is to regulate my heart rate, and that keeps my, that keeps my blood pressure from spiking. I don't actually have high blood pressure. And they knew this. And when my blood pressure was peaked, it was because I was in pain. It had nothing to do with me having high blood pressure. They were just pushing medication. And it doesn't have to be a name brand medication. They get kickbacks re whether they prescribe something that's generic or not. Um, so anyway, everyone I'm talking to is giving me this horror story about these hospital systems. Now... When I got to Buffalo, I was immediately hospitalized through the ER at Sisters of Charity for sepsis and cancer treatment. They got oncology on board, GYN on board, pulmonary on board, cardio on board because I was having heart attacks. And the heart attacks were caused by severe blood loss from the uterine mass rupturing. And then that would cause, the sepsis was caused not only by the uterine mass rupturing, but the cancer was accelerated and it has metastasized to both sinuses. That's why you see one side of my face, specifically this side, 
It's not as swollen as it normally is. My neck is swollen. But the cancer's in both sinuses. And it's, for whatever reason, it's markedly worse on the right side. So this side of my face, you can see my lip and the side of my face kind of droops. It's not as, um, it isn't as, it doesn't move as much. It, it doesn't have as much activity going on as the left side. This is visible evidence of stage 4 cancer. When you see this drooping, you have to, to write it down. And then you have to investigate and find out what the cause is. Well, they know the cause is the cancer in the sinuses. They know that a Catholic health oncologist deliberately accelerated this cancer and caused it to rapidly metastasize. And that is evident in that United Health has CAT scans and, and um, ultrasounds that they paid for. In early of 2016, the cancer was accelerated in September of 2015. In, in January and February of 2016, which just was a couple of months later, only thing that showed up on the CAT scans and ultrasounds was the one mass and a Nebothian cyst on my cervix. And that's all that showed up. By November of 2016, masses showed up. It showed a lober pneumonia starting in the left lobe, which was actually the cancer metastasizing in the left lung. Uh, the, there was an, a, a huge lymph node that was completely opaque. You couldn't see through it. It was a big white spot, and it's swollen on my back. Um, the sinuses are now completely where you, they're not transparent anymore. They're just solid white. That's all you can see is solid white on the, uh, CAT scans. And then it showed where when, when it metastasizes, it causes infections and that causes abscesses. And I have pictures of the whole side of my face blown out where it caused abscesses in the roof of my mouth that wrapped around my pharynx. And I was hospitalized at Honor Health in Arizona for sepsis, my, my white cell count was 21. I was severely bloated. Uh, the, the, they actually caused a surface wound that caused scarring right here that you can't really see uh, with this camera. Um, and that was uh, part of Dignity. That was They were all partnered with Catholic Health and they weren't going to snitch out what happened in Missouri, that that Catholic health oncologist deliberately accelerated the cancer to kill me as part of that sex scandal with University of Missouri, Beth Sweeney, and Dr. Joe Parks. So when I get to Buffalo, they're not really interested in blowing the whistle. But they've got a merger coming up. At that time, I didn't realize that in February of 2019, Catholic Health Initiatives and Dignity were merging in a $29 billion merger where the Dignity CEO, Lloyd Dean, was going to be the CEO of Common Spirit Health. He helped Obama write the Obamacare, uh, the, the, the Affordable Care Act, and form the marketplace, which implicates Barack Obama and the CEO, all these CEOs of Catholic Health, and Tenet, who all eventually got federal appointments, were listed as the most powerful people, one of the, mo the top 27 most powerful people in health care. Uh, they got a oversight appointments to do oversight on their own fraud. I didn't know that that merger was in the works. So they weren't about to implicate dignity and Catholic Health Initiatives, specifically SSM St. Mary's, that that doctor deliberately accelerated the cancer, which means all of my medical care is his post-surgical complications, which means they're supposed to pay for it for free. And then all of these ERs dumping me, that's patient dumping. It's actually, they can face sanctions for that pay huge fines. I mean, so that's one of the reasons why they formed the monopoly. So there's no oversight. They all act as one big entity. So nobody reports their patient dumping and the patient never gets a second opinion. 
beyond the false diagnoses that they originally made four years ago. Or, you know, actually 2013 and actually before that. So, I recorded everything that went on at Catholic Health in Buffalo. And I will actually include a link to a recording after I finally got covered by New York Medicaid. They, the Catholic Health Sisters of Charity discharged me and falsified the records to hide the cancer, to hide the patient dumping. My PCP, Dr. Japuti, got recorded coming into my room at Catholic Health, and he said, they're refusing to send you to Roswell because you don't have insurance. He said, if Great Lakes will take you, go over to Buffalo General that's affiliated with Great Lakes and get your referral to Great Lakes Oncology. You need to, you need to be under oncology care. And I was not stabilized. When they admit you to a hospital, especially through an ER, their job is to prevent destabilization. With acceler deliberately accelerated cancer, that means they get you in a cancer treatment and they start, they do a biopsy, start the chemotherapy, start the radiation, do whatever they got to do to stabilize you so they can go in and start doing those surgeries. Well, they hid the fact that I had cancer to hide the fact that they were dumping me as a cancer patient tried to refer me to some other, they first, they got repeatedly recorded telling me they don't do GYN oncology services. So I called Great Lakes, that's why he told me to go to Buffalo General for the Great Lakes referral. While I was still in the hospital there, I called Great Lakes and said, can my doctor transfer me to you because Roswell's refusing to take me without cancer treatment? And she said, why don't they have the GYN oncologist there see you? And I said, they're telling me they don't have GYN oncology. She said, that's odd because Dr. Marchetti's there every Tuesday doing, doing surgery. They're on the Harlem, at the Harlem Road Sisters of Charity Hospital. He's also on staff at Great Lakes, which is ECMC, which is Buffalo General. She said, I, I don't understand why they're lying to you and telling you that they don't have GYN oncology. She said, who's the oncologist you saw? I said, Adam Katowski. She said, he's on staff at ECMC, he's on staff at Kaleida, he's on staff at Roswell, and he's on staff at Catholic Health. She said, this don't make no sense. She said, what really doesn't make any sense is they can get you Medicaid pending. If they send you to us, we can get you Medicaid pending. Tell them to send you on over here. We'll just get you Medicaid pending. It's no big deal. So instead of doing any of that, they send uh, John LaForge. I've got his business card still. He's the nursing manager of the four fourth floor. Coming in schmoozing me saying, oh, we're going to get you to our GYN uh, facility. The Women's Health Center that's like downtown Buffalo or whatever. And here's the name, and they referred me out to GYN Pulmonary and Cardio. And they gave me, but I didn't, still didn't have insurance. So there was no way I was, they were going to follow up with the appointment because I had no way to pay for it. And I had already seen a GYN right there in their hospital. His name was uh, Dr. Noor M. Shaw, and he's the one that said, she's got to go straight to Roswell. When he did that ablation, he made it so that we can't do a DNC biopsy. She's at risk for perforation. And I said, why not just do a whole hysterectomy? He says, not with your heart stopping and you fighting sepsis. You've got to get stabilized by oncology and get the sepsis and this cancer treated before we're ever going to be able to do a major surgery and put you under. And he he made sure Dr. Japuti came in the room and he told Dr. Japuti what he wanted. And I recorded all of that and I sent all of those recordings to the OMIG's office and the Attorney General so they could hear it. So it's not like the Attorney General or the, or the uh, Office of the Medicaid Inspector General could say that it was my word against the doctors. They got to hear it for themselves. And uh, basically what happened was uh, it turned into one huge mess. When I went to Buffalo General, they didn't make the referral to Great Lakes. 
They locked me up at ECMC and got recorded telling me to leave town.